With the PS5 and the Xbox Series X just around the corner, it's pretty safe to say that what we're currently considering next-gen games are going to pretty soon become current. We've already seen, for example, the likes of Metro Exodus, which challenges even some of 2020's top-spec PCs. But we've now, as of August, seen another addition to the slowly increasing list of next-gen games, Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020 which really is challenging even to receive 30 FPS on the high settings on some of the really expensive PC builds out there. Today we're going to be taking a look at a £200 build that's going to be suited towards Microsoft Flight Simulator's demanding specs in order to get respectable frame rates at the low settings. It's not impossible, just so long as you're willing to lose some of those graphic qualities. I hope you enjoy this video. Now, before we go any further, I wanted to show you this in-game footage so that you know what sort of performance to expect. This is running on my completed £200 build, and while flying over the centre of London, I'm getting a pretty respectable, sort of roughly 40 FPS. So this is the Microsoft Flight Simulator store page, and if we scroll down, we'll be able to see here, they've got the system requirements for the uh, game already on the page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at these requirements and give you my own opinion on what I think would make the best balanced budget build here so that you won't be putting too much money into one component and then leaving another one that won't be, uh, be able to fully utilise uh, somewhere in the system. So we'll get a balanced system where everything is able to work to its fullest here. Taking a closer look at the specs here, we're going to choose to go down the i5 route as that's going to lead to an overall cheaper build. So, you want any 4th gen i5 since the i5 4460 is probably the lowest, apart from maybe the uh, 4430. If you're on 2nd or 3rd or even 1st gen i5, unfortunately you're going to have to upgrade now. As for the RAM, they recommend 8 gigs, so we'll be using that much as well. And with video memory, even though the minimum is 2 gigabytes here, it really will use up more if it has access to it. So you want to go with at least 3 or 4 gigabytes. Uh, something like the RX 550 though won't cut it. You'll want either a 560 or 570 or a 1050 Ti or a 1060 will be where we'll be going with the graphics. So now let's go into my build and I'll be showing you what I've got here and we'll be adding up the price together. It's worth considering that the i5-4460 has a max of 3.4 gigahertz. My, P my processor has a base of 3.5 gigahertz but what I'm going to be doing is using the Intel uh, my BIOS rather, to turn off Intel Turbo, meaning my processor will be limited to the 3.5 GHz. Most 4th Gen i5s do actually get better performance than that though, apart from if you're going right there to the 4460 at the bottom. In this £200 build, we'll start off with some of the basics first. A case and power supply unit can often be found for around £30 plus the motherboard, which needs to be LGA1150 supporting for 4th Gen i5 processors, can be found for another £30, which brings us to a total of £60 altogether. But it's worth noting that I'm overestimating all of the prices so that we have some money left over, since usually you can find good deals, which will mean they'll come to cheaper than I'm saying here. Next up, the processor. And for this, as I said before, we're using an LGA um, 150 i5-4690, that's this here. Uh, as I said also before, we'll be limiting it to 3.5 GHz in order for it to uh, be more reflective of a cheaper uh, processor. So for this we're going to say £35. So we're now at £95. Graphics card up next, and for this we're using a GTX 1050 Ti. 
The reason why we're using a 1050 Ti and not a 4 gig 770, even though they can both be found for similar price and will result in similar performance, is because of this. You see, it's a lot cheaper to go with a 1050 Ti and then use a, a low power, cheap power supply unit that you can often find with the cases or other pre-built PCs, which will then save money. So for this, we'll say round up to about £80. And so we're now at about uh, £175. With the graphics card inserted, it's time to move on to the RAM. We're going with 8GB here, but more specifically, you want two matching sticks of 4GB in order to run in dual channel. This is important because Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is very reliant on your RAM, and by running in dual channel, it will mean that the, the effective bandwidth of the memory will be twice as high. So we're going with two 4 gig sticks of DDR3 here, because we're on 4th Gen i5. That can be found for around £25, which means we're now at our £200 limit. And we've got all of the parts in here apart from storage so far. So let's put our RAM in. Now, as I, as I said, the price here is being overestimated. It's probably really likely that you'll be able to get this for a lot cheaper, and it means that you'll have money left over for storage. You can either choose to go for a larger storage solution, such as a one terabyte hard drive, and it'll mean that you'll be able to store other games on your computer as well. Or you can go for a, something like a 256 gigabyte SSD, which Flight Simulator and an installation of Windows 10 will take up the most of and not leave much space for anything else left. You'd also have a little bit of money left over for things such as SATA cables to connect your storage. And you also need to remember a cooler for your processor and also a bit of thermal paste. Overall, you might be saving even more money if you already have a system which you can keep parts such as the storage, motherboard, case, power supply unit from. So, £200 really is kind of a maximum for this system. Right now, I'll finish getting the rest of the system started up and then we'll see how it performs in Flight Simulator 2020. And voila, now all that's left is to get the side panel on, and then we can start gaming. With, with the game finally loaded, it's time to get into the round of Flight Simulator on £200 budget PC. As you can see, performance isn't too bad. Taking off from JFK Airport, we're getting around 30 FPS. The plan is to fly up to the Empire State Building to see just how well the game performs when we're in more heavily uh, occupied areas. As you can see, the graphics are made up of mainly uh, offs and lows here. We've got 1080p resolution and render scaling set to 100% since I don't really like it when the resolution is set any lower. This gives us a true 1080p experience. As we approach the built up city, it's clear that the system is still able to handle the game fairly well, getting around 25 frames per second. Good job we went for a 4GB card rather than a 2GB card, 
which is why I recommend you avoid the 2GB 770. We're currently using about 3GB of video RAM, which would even be challenging to the 1060 3GB variant here. So, as you saw, Microsoft Flight Simulator on a £200 PC? Well, it's not too bad. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and like, and also comment your thoughts on the build and on the game. For now, see you in another video.